Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here at Epcot today with a brand new video. Now if you know me, then you know my favorite food in the whole world is cheese. In fact, I base a lot of my restaurant reviews on how much cheese I can eat, which is exactly what we're going to do today. We are headed to all 11 countries here in World Showcase and we're going to rank them based on how much cheese you can eat. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. It's going to be a Gouda time. I'm sorry. That was unbelievable. I gotta stop. All right, let's go. Starting this list at number 11, China. Do you know how much cheese there is in China? Goose egg. There's no cheese in China. The only times that I've ever had cheese in China are occasionally they'll do some kind of cheesecake at the Nine Dragons, which isn't currently opening. And over at the Festival Kitchen, sometimes they'll do Crab Rangoon, which are those wontons I'm obsessed with that have the crab meat and the cream cheese. Nine Dragons not open, no cheese. Coming in at number 10, Japan. So much like China, Japan doesn't use a lot of cheese in their food. It's just not a big thing in Asian culture to cook with a lot of dairy and cheese. So there is, however, one thing you can get right now that has cheese in it. Besides, of course, you can get sushi in Japan and some sushi rolls have cream cheese. So that is a point. But what we're going to try out right now is they have an uzu, yuzu, wuzu. I think it's uzu cheesecake up at their quick service restaurant that we're going to give a whirl. Whenever I'm in the Japan Pavilion, I like to come look at the koi fish in the pond right here. And I actually have a favorite fish, which is probably a sign that there's something wrong with me or that I come to Disney World a lot, but it's this guy right here. I like his black and white kind of like polka dot back and his black circles around his eye, which is how I look after staying up too late to binge watch Schitt's Creek. So that's my favorite fish. Come say hi if you see him. This is the Uzu Cheesecake from Katsura Grill. I've never actually had this. Katsura Grill is not my favorite quick service. Um, I much prefer other places like Mexico and France, but this cheesecake actually looks very good. And I'm very curious as to what Uzu Cheesecake tastes like. Okay, I really like the berry sauce. It's kind of masking the uzu. I'm gonna try and get. It's just got a very fresh, floral almost flavor to it. Almost reminds me of a lemon cheesecake, but not quite. Okay, I like it. Now, would I really count this as something super cheesy? No. I think Japan spot number 10 is fair. And again, it's not super cheesy. And that's the whole point of this video is how much cheese is it? The next country on our list, we've got the beautiful pavilion of Morocco. Now Morocco does have some really good food, home of some of the most underrated and delicious food in World Showcase, but not a lot of cheese. Occasionally you'll see goat cheese in a couple items at Time Spicer table used to have like a brief fondue. Um, however, right now in this moment, there's only a couple of different pastries that actually have some kind of cheese in it. So kind of going the Japan route of having like a sweet cheese item uh, but not any savory cheese item so that's why it falls in our next spot on our list but we're gonna try one of these pastries obviously the moroccan pavilion recently added a bunch of pastries to this cute little window right here this has always been here they've always had drinks they still have drinks um, but they added a bunch of different moroccan pastries so we are gonna get one of them and look at, here we go. Here's our list of all of the different ones they have. So looking at the menu here, you see all these yummy looking pastries, but it doesn't look like any of them have cheese. But according to my research, this one, the Floyeres, um, actually is a sweet cream cheese baklava. So we're gonna give that one a whirl. But all of these look really tasty. I have 
cut my little dessert in half so I could see inside of it. It doesn't look like there's cream cheese, but there's supposed to be cream cheese, so. Mm. Whatever it is, it's delicious. Definitely tastes honey and a nice fruit filling. You got that puff pastry, but I don't think there's cheese in here. I'm gonna have to go ask the cast members if there's any cheese in the pastries. Otherwise, we gotta knock Morocco down on the list. Okay, so I talked to the cast members at the pastry window and none of the pastries have cream cheese in them, even though some of them traditionally do in Moroccan food, because I Googled all of them before I ordered. Um, and then also Spice Road Table right here, they recently changed their menu because they changed ownership. They used to have a brie fondue, they don't have that anymore, um, but they have rotating desserts and there is a chance that one of those desserts might have cream cheese in it. Um, so because of that, I actually have to bump Morocco from nine to 10 because Japan always has that uzu cheesecake and Morocco only possibly has a cheese-based dessert. So not real cheesy. But again, that pastry was delicious, so that's a fun spot to get a dessert if you're looking for something a little more unique, but it's not cheesy. Coming in at number eight on our list, Germany. Now, unfortunately, right this moment, the only cheese-related item I could get would be in the beer garden um, at their desserts. They bring you a dessert trio, and one of them is a Bavarian cheesecake. So that's the only cheese they have right now. Uh, they used to have more cheese at the beer garden back when it was a buffet-style restaurant. They had beer cheese soup that you could get. They also had a cold bar with lots of delicious cheesy uh, and meat items, as well as maybe some noodles and things like that. But unfortunately, right now, Beer Garden is open, but it's operating as a family service restaurant, and they bring you lots of delicious bratwurst, other sausages, things like that, but no cheese. The other thing that it was excellent in Germany that is not available right now is that Summer House right here, which is the quick service location where you can get your bratwurst, where you can get your beer. They used to have noodle gratin, which was basically a baked macaroni and cheese, super, super delicious and cheesy. It was only like $4.99 or $5, and it was a great snack, could definitely be a light meal, um, but with the limited menus, they haven't brought that back yet. So Germany sits sadly at number eight with very little cheese available right now. Coming in at number seven on the pavilions, ranked by how much cheese I can eat, Norway. Now, unfortunately right now with the limited menus and some of the restaurants still being closed, Norway doesn't have any cheese for me to eat. So I'm mostly ranking this off of what you could eat before and what will hopefully be coming back. So to start in Kringla Bakery, uh, they are open and they do have lots and lots of yummy treats for you, but normally they also serve a bunch of sandwiches, including um, with some that have Norwegian cheese and Scandinavian cheese and apples and turkey and really, really yummy sandwiches. So there's that. They also normally have a cheesecake that's decorated with an Olaf on it. It changes flavors seasonally. So they'll do like a lemon cheesecake or an Oreo cheesecake, um, but they don't have that right now either. The other place you can actually get surprisingly a lot of cheese is over at Akershus, which is the princess character dining in this pavilion. Not open right now. They're actually using it as a relaxation station, but Akershus normally has an all you care to enjoy cold buffet before your plated entree and your desserts. And a big chunk of that all you care to enjoy buffet is just a giant charcuterie. So lots of cold meats, lots of delicious cheeses, including the famous brown cheese, which actually kind of has like a caramelly taste to it. And it looks weird, but I promise it's delicious. And then as part of your dessert trio at Akershus, a cheesecake covered in a fresh berry sauce. So there are normally a lot of delicious cheesy items here in Norway, but unfortunately right now, I can't sample any of them for you. Coming in at number six, we've got my homeland, the American Adventure. Now, I have to say I'm a little surprised that America only made it to number six because we eat a lot of cheese, or maybe that's just me, but I know it's not. Um, but there's not a lot of cheesy options here in the American Adventure Pavilion. You've got the Fife and Drum, which is mostly just turkey legs, popcorn, some drinks. You've got Regal Eagle, which does have a few cheesy options, but the majority of that food is barbecue, which isn't notoriously cheesy. And that's it besides festival kiosks. Not to worry, we are gonna go into Regal Eagle and try a cheesy delight and see how it stacks up for our number six on this list. Regal Eagle, if you haven't been opened up just a little bit before the closure last year, so not a lot of folks have had the chance to dine here. It replaced the Liberty Inn, which was for sure the worst quick service restaurant in World Showcase, because um, it was just very, 
meh and nothing that special. Regal Eagle is actually pretty good. Um, they've got barbecue. They've got a bunch of different sauces. It's loosely based after the Muppets, which like I wish more things were based on the Muppets. If you do come eat at Regal Eagle, I insist, hi there, that you come look at some of these details because again, it's loosely Muppet themes and it's a salute to all cook off, but mostly barbecue, which is a Sam Eagle joke. Um, and Sam Eagle is actually hosting a competition amongst the Muppets to make the best barbecue and the best sauce. So here you've got Pitmaster Bobo. He made the spicy mop sauce. There's the spicy mop that I assume he used to make it and all of his ingredients. Over here, we've got Rolf. He's making the dry rub. Keep on going. Our friend Gonzo made the mustard sauce. And then over here, we've got Janice, who Breedlove told me is his Muppet doppelganger, which I see it. Um, and she made the vinegar sauce. So come look at all this fun detail. If you want any of the sauces, you can select it when you're doing mobile order, but if you want another one or additional, just ask them at the counter. Um, before the closure, they were doing pumps so you could just get it yourself, but of course they're not doing that right now. Uh, but just go ahead and ask at the counter, and I recommend trying a little bit of everything until you find the one that you like the most. Here's my burger, and then of course, if I'm gonna get a side on cheesy video day, it's gonna be macaroni and cheese. And I don't know if you're realizing this, but this burger is served on garlic toast. So, classic burger, tomato, lettuce, um, on garlic toast. They also have a barbecue burger that I've had, but today we're going classic cheeseburger. Okay, let's get into this cheeseburger. It's not super cheesy, but it looks and smells delicious. Why aren't all sandwiches served on garlic bread? Okay, it's delicious but it's not super cheesy, but the garlic bread on it is A plus. I wish Regal Eagle was in Magic Kingdom because Magic Kingdom to me is the weakest when it comes to quick service and Epcot was already the strongest. So we didn't need another really good quick service here at Epcot. Um, Cause I still like eating something a little more exciting, exciting um, and adventurous in one of the pavilions, but it is good barbecue. It is, this burger is good. Um, the patty's not blowing me away, but the fact that it's on garlic bread is really what I'm enjoying. So, not that cheesy. Yes, delicious. Now let's try this mac and cheese. Okay, so it's not the cheesiest mac and cheese. There's not a good cheese pull. Um, but I will say, I had it when the restaurant first reopened um, and it was not very good mac and cheese. It was very under flavored. And then I had it a couple months ago, like when the parks reopened and it was better. And I think this is actually the best I've had it. I saw them salting it and seasoning it to order. And I think that helped a lot. And there's like a stronger cheese before it was just kind of bland, but now I can definitely chase that you've got some good cheddar and stuff in there. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed in this. So to me for cheesy scale, this wins over the burger. As I keep eating this burger, I'm inclined to tell you that it's only really good because of the garlic toast. It's not the best burger I've ever had. So if you want to eat at Regal Eagle, I still vote for like the brisket sandwich is really awesome. Um, the banana pudding for dessert is really great. Some of the sides I really like, the onion rings are fabulous. So I'm not saying don't eat here, but if you are craving a burger, there's better burgers at Disney. Coming in at number five on our list, and honestly, this one surprised me, the United Kingdom. When I started looking at all the menus and thinking about cheese for this video, I didn't think the UK would rank very high, but it does because of some of the great options you can get at the Rose and Crown dining room. They've got a Welsh pub burger, they've got a shepherd's pie with cheese on the top, and they've got a cheese board. So we're gonna go eat it. A lot of people, when they think about the Rose and Crown, just think of the pub, which I totally get it. One of my favorite spots to grab a drink in Disney World. You can get to go drinks. You can also get to go fish and chips there. But there's also the Rose and Crown dining room, which is a full service dining room. It's a great spot when there's fireworks because you can actually sit out on the patio um, if you time it right. And you can watch the fireworks from the lagoon side, one of the only restaurants on the actual lagoon um, here. But a little chilly and there's no fireworks and it's the daytime so we're just going to be excited by cheese y'all know i'm more of a coffee drinker but you know 
when in Rome. It's chilly out, so I thought I needed a warm beverage to go with my cheese. Okay, my yummy looking cheese board is here. And first of all, let's talk about the plate that it comes on. I love that it feels like we're actually in a, like, English pub kitchen right now. Okay, so we've got a cheddar, which is the most popular cheese in the United Kingdom, with piccalilli, which I just looked up and is the UK version of a South American pickled dish. So it's generally just like pickled vegetables and it's gonna change by region and by restaurant and pub. This is Cotsworth cheese, um, which usually has chives and onions in it, and it's served with a sweet onion jam. And then this is Blue Stilton, and it's served with a, it looks like fig. She said a fruit jam, but it looks like fig to me. And then you've got some little crackers to go with it. So I'm excited to try this cheese. I'm gonna try each cheese on its own, and then I'm gonna try it on the cracker with its accompaniment. So here's the cheddar. Mm. I love English and Irish cheddar because it's sharper than American. And that is no different. That is so good. Mm. Oh my God, I could eat a whole block of that. Now the Cotsworth. Mm. Oh, okay, wow. It's super smooth, creamy, and then it does have that taste of the chives in it. That is super yummy. And then a little bit of the Stilton. Definitely blue cheese. Definitely strong blue cheese when you eat it on its own. So if you're not a blue cheese fan, probably not going to love that one, but I like blue cheese, so I'm good with it. Now I'm going to put a little of this, it looks like pickled cauliflower in this bite I'm going to get with my cheddar. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about the pickled vegetables, but the acidity for those plus the cheese, it's really good. This Cotsworth, I think, was my favorite of the cheeses on its own, so I hope it's still delicious with this sweet onion jam. That's really yummy. Mm. And now I'll do the blue with a little bit of the, I think, figs, but I'm also seeing, like, as I'm putting it on my little cracker, I think maybe some other veg or fruits chopped up in there. And then I'm gonna get my piece of Stilton. Mmm. There might be some apricot in there, but it's got a little tartness, and that's going well with the blue. But this is a really good cheese board, and it's a pretty hefty serving. Definitely shareable if you come in here as an appetizer for some people. So, the UK. Didn't think it would be such a hit with the cheese, but it really is. We have made it to cheese country number four, Canada, eh? And it's all thanks to one restaurant, La Cellier. One, the legendary cheddar cheese soup. So good. Cheese boards, cheesecake, poutine with cheese curds on the French fries. Also, borscht and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese come on the side of steaks if you'd like them to. One restaurant, but a ton of cheesy power, and you know we're going in there to get soup. If you're not familiar, Le Cellier is a signature steakhouse, so it is a more expensive restaurant. If the dining plan were around, it would be a two-point restaurant, obviously known for steak. Their signature steak has got mushrooms and a red wine sauce, but they're also known for the most delicious soup, possibly of all time. Here is the La Cellier menu. So much cheesy goodness. Like, okay, cheddar cheese soup. We already talked about it. It's been ordered, we're gonna eat it. The poutine, the signature poutine has Canadian cheddar on it and then truffle and a red wine reduction. And then they also have a seasonal poutine that they'll rotate out right now. It's a beef bourbignon. Bourbignon. I only think of Julia Childs when I hear that word. Um, and that one has uh, Gruyere cheese on it. So more cheese. Uh, you do have a delicious, I've had this, the Iceberg Wedge. It's got blue cheese on it, so that's another cheesy dish. And then, of course, a Canadian cheese plate. Looking over at our enhancements that you can get. You can just order these if you want, or you can get them on the side of your steak. you got five cheese macaroni. You've also got that loaded borson mashed potatoes. And borson is that creamy herb cheese that they use in a lot of things. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So much delicious cheese. And... You wouldn't even expect that in a steakhouse, but here we are. 
Mm, my soup has already arrived and I wish you could smell this through my phone. You can smell that beer cheese, you can smell that bacon, you can smell the cheddar. Oh my goodness, this soup is so good and it's such a treat. I don't get it often, but when I do, what a treat. This soup. I don't know if you guys remember, but I tried and failed to make this soup when quarantine was happening. And I, I did okay. I used the recipe on All Ears Now. We've got a ton of Disney recipes. Little shameless plug there. Go check them out. And the soup recipe's on there. But I am not a great cook. I'm not a chef. I know Remy says anyone can cook, but not, not great at it. Um, but this soup is so incredible. When I made it, it was very chunky. It was more like sauce than soup but it's so rich it's so creamy you can taste that beer cheese the bacon the scallions you can often get the soup at the festival kiosk like during food and wine this is one of the things you can get from the canada booth but to just come in here and have your yummy breads and your warm soup it's so good canada would rank higher than four on this list if there was more than one restaurant in the pavilion but there's only la cellier and as many as delicious offerings as it has, the, the top three restaurant, the top three countries have multiple places you can get some cheese. But wow, this soup alone is, this soup is maybe my favorite single item on this list. And that's a bold claim. Disney must haves. If you're a cheese fan, if you're a bacon fan, if you're a soup fan, especially it's a little chilly today. It's in the, the 50s today. It is so good. So either come into La Cellier and get it, um, or if you don't want to do a whole sit-down reservation, you're not in the mood for steak, you don't want to do the whole thing. Um, if you're here during a festival and they have it up at the festival kiosk, definitely try the soup. All right, so whenever you come to La Cellier, you get this fabulous bread basket as well. And you get three different kinds of bread. The pretzel bread represents Ontario because they do the second largest Oktoberfest celebration outside of Germany. Um, you've got the multi-grain bread, which represents um, the free promises provinces up in Canada. And you've also got the sourdough, which represents the Yukon because they have a huge sourdough festival after their long winter is over. So make sure you get your breads and then pro tip, dip the bread in the soup. Get your pretzel bread, dip it all in there. Let's just end the video. It's too good. It's too good. This wins. Individual dish-wise, I really do think this might win, but wow. Coming in at number three, Italy. Italy, of course, so many cheesy delights. You've got Via Napoli back here. That's where you get that fabulous, fabulous pizza that I'm obsessed with. They've got a Quattro Formaggi. They've got um, delicious olive oil-based pizzas with amazing cheese on them. They've also got really good pastas there. Not that I'd recommend getting pasta if you're gonna go to Via Napoli. You've gotta get that incredible pizza. Speaking of pizza, right next door is Pizza Al Taglio, which is actually the walk-up pizza window. Now it's not usually open unless it's really busy or on a weekend or something, but they've got great to-go slices that you can get. And last but not least, you've got Tutto Italia, which is another full service restaurant here in Epcot. Tutto Italia is your more traditional pizza, uh, more traditional Italian. Talking pasta dishes, talking chicken parmesan, talking some delicious appetizers. Tutto Gusto here is the wine cellar, currently only open for to-go drinks, not food, but when it is open at a normal capacity, you can also get some great appetizers there, charcuterie boards, some little munchies and things like that. So what do you say we head into Tutto Italia and get us some Italian cheese? I've actually never eaten at Tutto Italia because I always eat at Via Napoli, but I'm excited to try it out and eat cheese. All right, to start here at Tutto Italia, this is their gigantic charcuterie board. It actually is meant to serve two, uh, but as you can see, it's got some delicious olives and salami and prosciutto and artichokes, but we're here for the cheese. Um, so you've got some Asiago right here, some gorgonzola and some Fontina cheeses. Try it, the little cheeses by themselves first. That's the Fontina. It's a very non-aggressive cheese. It's very mild. It's a, it's a semi-hard cheese, so it's, it cuts really nicely. Versus I'm trying to cut the Asiago now, which is a much more 
aggressive cheese, but still so good. It's got that nuttiness. And then Gorgonzola, blue cheese's less offensive cousin. Okay, wow, that's a fabulous Gorgonzola. I love Gorgonzola, I love blue cheese too. But if you're offended by blue cheese, give this just a little try sometime. Try Gorgonzola on something because it's not quite as in your face with the like pungence that is on blue cheese. But now I'm gonna like mix it up with these little crostini things. Do a little, little meats, do a little cheese. You know I love a cheese board. This is a great one. It is expensive, it's almost $40 for this, but it's meant for two. But we're in Italy, we gotta have a cheese board. It's an absolute requirement. Here is my delicious cheesy pasta dish. I asked my sweet server, what is the cheesiest thing on the menu? And he said this right here. It's a fettuccine dish. It's got that nice creamy cheese sauce, grilled chicken on top. And when they said extra Parmesan, I said, you betcha. Super creamy, cheesy. Got those fresh nudes. I haven't ordered chicken fettuccine at a restaurant in so long. And now I'm wondering why. The chicken's also grilled really nicely. Definitely a huge portion, definitely shareable definitely cheesy. Now, would I tell you to come eat this or be an Apple pizza? Definitely be an Apple pizza. I have a hard time buying pasta in restaurants because I feel like I can make pasta at my house. It's one of the like four things I can actually cook. Um, so for me, the, the cheesy king here in Italy is definitely that delicious pizza, but I'm really enjoying this and Italy is keeping it cheesy. The number two pavilion that you could eat so much cheese, Mexico. Now this is a very close race between the silver and the gold because Mexico has so many delicious cheesy options. Let's start inside the pyramid. Normally La Cava del Tequilo, when it has a sit down section, amazing queso. Also inside the pyramid, the full service restaurant San Angel Inn. Cheese comes on pretty much everything in Mexican food, but what I really like is that uh, queso fundido that I had last time I went there that had the peppers and it comes with fresh tortillas and you scoop it out of a skillet. So delicious. They've also got a horchata cheesecake at San Angel Inn. They do the queso fundido and the horchata cheesecake at uh, La Hacienda de San Angel, which is the restaurant outside full service. Um, and at the Cantina de San Angel, which is your quick service restaurant here, they've got tacos, they've got rice bowls, but most importantly, they've got cheese empanadas. And we're gonna eat some right now. If you've never been to La Cantina de San Angel, this is the quick service option in Mexico, and they've got some great stuff. Really good tacos, nachos, guacamole. But what we're here for are these empanadas with cheese and hot tip you can get nacho cheese for 75 cents on the side of anything and it's like queso cheese it's not like plastic fake cheese it's like delicious actual cheese here are the delicious empanados con queso so you get three empanadas and then they have a little bit of sour cream and salsa verde on them they come with rice and beans and then i did get a side of queso to dip them in they also have them on the kids meal you only get two empanadas they don't have all the sides uh, but then you get a water bottle and some apple slices. That would be a great snack, or if you're eating a bunch of stuff around the world, you could get those two and split it, uh, but this is the adult portion. Okay, I'm literally so excited about this. Look at the inside of that. Tell me that doesn't look amazing. It's so unbelievably cheesy. I'm now gonna dip it in queso though, because I want it to be even cheesier. That's amazing. I think this is such a good quick service location. The food has really stepped it up over the past few years. It used to be very Tex-Mexy and now it's a lot more authentic. They've brought in a lot more flavors. The rice bowls are amazing. The tacos are amazing, but if you're a cheese lover, OMG, these are amazing. If you do want empanadas with meat though, across the way at Lechosa de Margarita, they've got the beef barbacoa empanadas that I also love, but cheese fans, this is incredible. Mexico is always a leader when it comes to cheese, and this is no different. 
and the winner of our Epcot rankings by how much cheese we can eat? France! France is known for its delicious cheeses and the Epcot Pavilion is no different. There's a bunch of cheesy items on the full service menus we're going to look at and there's a ton of delicious cheesy items in my favorite spot, the bakery inside. Cheese boards, cheesy quiches, cheesy sandwiches, so much cheese and it's French cheese so you know it's really really good. So congratulations France, you're the champion of cheese. Let's go get some to celebrate your victory. First up, let's take a look at the full service restaurant here. Chefs de France, look at their menu. They've got some delicious cheesy goodness, starting with French onion soup topped with a bunch of Gruyere cheese. They've got a cheese plate. Oh my goodness, yes. Cheese, cheese, cheese. They also at times have this really cheesy pasta that's got Gruyere and it's so cheesy, it's fabulous. But of course they're on a little bit of a limited menu right now. Lay all my favorite quick service location of all of Disney World, the bakery here in France. So much cheese, plus France is opening a creperie very, very soon along with the Ratatouille ride and it's gonna have sweet and savory crepes. You know there's gonna be cheese in those. But for now, what does the bakery have in store for us? Hello, how are you? I'm great. Oh, wow. We're going to have a lot of things. Um, can I have the brie and apple sandwich? Yes, please. Um, the ham and cheese on the croissant? Yes, please. Uh, and the cheese plate, please. Does that come with a baguette or anything? Can I buy a baguette? Yeah, a half baguette is fabulous. Thank you. Basically, everything on the savory side has cheese on it. You've got a cheese plate. You've got a ham and cheese baguette. Uh, you've got a croque monsieur, which is that ham and cheese with the be bechamel on it. You've got a ham and cheese croissant. You've got a ham and cheese quiche. You've got a ham and cheese, uh, I'm sorry, ham, no ham, bacon, cheese, and egg croissant. You've got a chicken sandwich with cheese on it. You've got uh, the pizza rallende, which I'd say really fast because I don't know how to present, pronounce it. That's got cheese on it. And you've got that apple and brie sandwich. So all of the cheese. Obviously, since France is the final country and it's number one, we're gonna have to show multiple cheesy things. I'm not gonna pick just one thing. So for starters, I got the ham and cheese croissant, which is maybe my favorite thing in here. It's only $5, which boggles my mind. When dining plans are around, it is a snack credit and it's a big, flaky, delicious ham and cheese on a croissant. There's cheese on the top, they melt it. It's so yummy. I also got the brie and apple sandwich on a multi-grain and then had them toast that. And then of course, if we're doing a cheese video, we're gonna get a cheese plate, which does just come with the cheese, but then you can add either a half or a full baguette that's made from scratch every day. And now we're ready for our cheesy feast. Croissant, oh, it's still warm. It's so good. And every time I get it, I'm like, it can't be that good. Why do I like it so much? That's why. Do you see all that cheese? Do you see that flaky crush? It is so phenomenal. Love that bechamel sauce. You can definitely taste the egg. So if you're not an egg person, maybe not this one. Stick with like the plain baguette with the ham and cheese, but I like the croissant more than the baguette and yummers. Okay, now let's try the apple and brie, which I thought would be a little different. Ooh, that brie is good. I love this one too. When I do a charcuterie board, which is frequently, because it's like a grown up way for me to say I just wanna eat cheese for dinner. I like putting thinly sliced apples on there and using that to build my little thing sometimes instead of a cracker. And this reminds me of that. So you get a little freshness and Christmas from the apple and then you've got that strong yummy brie. Mm. And a nice warm multi-grain baguette very very good if you're into something different maybe you don't want meat that's a great option 
And now I'm trying to figure out how to attack this cheese board. Okay, I've made little pre-made bites of the, uh, the baguette and each of the cheeses so I can eat them. Um, the first one I'm gonna try is the blue. Mm, a yummy, woo, strong blue. I think the strongest blue I've had on this video, so. If you're not a blue cheese fan, that one's not gonna be your fave, but I like it. Now I'm gonna move to, I believe this is the Gouda. And it is, you know it, let's say it together. Very Gouda, very mild, very creamy. Now we're gonna go into the Gruyere. We're gonna end with the goat. I could cry, I'm so happy right now. And France really is the goat when it comes to cheese, like goat cheese, but also greatest of all time. Get it? You get it. And this is just a fraction of the cheesy offerings here. So if you're a cheese fan, I insist you come eat at this bakery. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my cheese video here in Epcot. I had an unbelievable time, and I hope you had a Gouda time too. I hope you weren't fed up, up, <laughs> or feeling blue after watching me eat all this cheese. I just wanted to help you out in case so emergency and you don't know where to eat. I want to be there for you. So let me know your favorite cheesy based treat in World Showcase. Let me know what questions you have about cheese in the comments. I'd love to talk about it more. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at All Ears Net. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and cheesy. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.